Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, Ene Aras Yadinos Tefari Neng. And this is another Shabbat, another Senbet, another Senbet portion and a Senbet reading. Those who are involved in any of the various independent studies and discipleship studies know that this week's reading is um, number 45 or the 45th Senbet or Shabbat, Sabbath. The Sabbath or the Torah portion, the Orit, the Torah portion reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to Deuteronomy chapter 7, 11. 7, 11. Now, if you've been paying attention and following along with both the Torah readings as well as um, um, world events and things that are going on in, in creation at this very time, Perhaps you're able to see a correspondence between the two, especially with the knowledge of who the true Beta Israel, the lost, once lost but now found sheep, are, and our particular experience in this time, as well as the, the blessing of the Almighty to us in the Orit, or in the Torah, in the Scriptures, in the Bible, especially being guided by the Spirit of God in Christ, of the King of Kings and His Christ, Getachina Med Hanatachin Jesus Christos, or Yeshua HaMushi in the, in the Hebrew. Now, the interesting thing about this Torah portion, this Torah portion reading, because we've been um, preparing certain books and documents, and we just want to make a reference that ones can, and please go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, check out some of the new books, some of the new books that we have produced. Some of them are written by yours truly. Others have been um, supplemented with commentaries, in particular the Amharic Psalms of David. That's now available, the Amharic Psalms of David. Um, a very important since the Psalms is a foundational book both for discipleship and independent studies and just one's walk in the spirit and the faith of the King of Kings of Abu Kedus and Getachin Ahmed Hanatachin Jesus Christos. Now, we just pointed out because we want you to check out some of the new books that are that are available either for download to you know as as a downloadable version or a hard copy, and particularly with the Amharic Psalms of David, the the Mesmura Dawit, that would be preferably best as a hard copy, to to get a hard copy of that. Um, we labored on that through the past couple of Sabbaths, and what we've been working on is our um, late earthly and vis-a-vis -vis Abba Kedus, our stepfather's work um, called this right here, The Biblical Antiquities of the Black Race, which was written by my earthly father, been working on um, doing the first full publishing and printing of the book. This is an older version of it right here. So I've been editing this. And it's very interesting, very, very interesting, not because it's my earthly um, father's work, even though there's an interest there for myself and perhaps for some others, but the content of it. So this was written nearly 40 years ago, 40 years ago. And what's interesting about this whole 40-year period of time, and he, he passed, um, I guess you could say, in the last... Um, uh, two to three years, uh, 2009, and he reached his uh, 70s, but um, perhaps, well, we can't really say perhaps what, you know, it is in a sense what it is, but what's interesting about what it is, as far as antiquities of the black race, this particular document that a part of part one was published in the Nation of Islam's Muhammad Speaks, he was from that particular generation of African Americans, what the correspondence here, because we said we're going to break off from doing the editing of that and get into this week's um, Torah portion reading and feeding, which is known in the Hebrew as Va'et um, Hanan or Wa'et Hanan, Wa'et Hanan, which means, and I pleaded and I besought. I pleaded and I besought. Bamarinya, as you would know if you have downloaded and have uh, printed out a copy, it's about 13 or so pages of this right here, our um, 
Yes, and that's how we uh, send that or read uh, Nibab or the Torah readings from the website. Go to page 6 of this particular booklet right here, and you will find that this is the particular reading for this week right here called Lemenahu, Lemenahu. In the Royal Amharic of the King of Kings, it's called Lemenahu, as well as another book that we have published, and hopefully when we get our first hard copy of it, we'll um, post something up about it as well as go through it. But you can actually order, even order a copy today if you're so interested, concerning the Hila Selassie, the first Bible, the book of the set, what we call and know as the book of the seven seals. So it's the first um, complete work that we've published on that in this, the 50th Jubilee. This is the 50th Jubilee of the first printing and publishing of the Lamb's Bible, the Emperor's Bible, the King of Kings, the Line of Judah's Bible, Hila Selassie's Bible, which Revelation 5 and 5 um, describes as being the book of the seven seals. So we published just recently a preliminary um, Rastafari notes, Rastafari preliminary notes on the Hila Selassie, the first Bible, you'll find it under Rastafari Notes and the HIM Hila Selassie, the first Amharic Bible. So that's available as well, giving an introduction to what we mean by the Book of the Seven Seals, by the Hila Selassie, the first Bible. So that's another matter as well that we just want to um, address as we're entering this particular um, Shabbat, this particular Senbet. And here's the connection now. Here's here, here's the link between, um, here's the link between uh, this and that. The link between this and that is this particular reading, which picks up where the 44th um, reading left off at um, chapter three of Orit Zedagim, um, um, Orit Zedagim or Debarim Devarim in the Hebrew. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. And now we're in the 45th Sabbath in our lunar solar orbit, according to the true calculation of time or our calendar. We're in the 45th, and this is called Lemenahu, which means, um, and I beseeched, and I besought, or I begged. I begged. Now, the actual context of this is found when we get into the word. And we get into the scripture once again. We're using the Schofield, um, the Schofield, the first Schofield reference, the first Schofield uh, reference Bible. You can see that right here. We're utilizing this as the English text, as our English study text. So, if we go to chapter three, this is the wanderings and conflicts of the wilderness. The wanderings and conflicts of the wilderness. And now there's a resonance to what's going on in the Far East, or not the Far East, but the East. Speaking of Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, the Somalian, um, the, the famine, the drought, and the famine situation that's, uh, that's affecting many of those countries, including Ethiopia that's in the Horn, vis-a-vis -vis the um, Islamo-fascist or the Al-Shabaab and Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda linked organization. Now, what we need to keep in mind, instead of getting into other people's conflicts and stuff, we have our own issues. You understand? So we need to know more about who we are. You understand? This is why we focus more time actually on the Torah scroll studies and the readings and the feedings so we can become better grounded in the knowledge of ourselves. Because if you separate a man from his identity, let me just quote this in full from my earthly father's work. We found this to be very um, interesting where he says um, that if you separate, let's get this right here, if you separate a, a man from his, you know, a man or people from their identity, then in a sense you separate, you separate them from themselves. Something that we already know, but it's interesting because this is 40 years ago. These works were written 40 years ago. And in our particular Torah scroll reading, what we're seeing is that 40 years have transpired. We're, we're about to complete a 40-year cycle in this particular Torah scroll reading. And a whole generation who were um, 
disobedient from the Almighty's perspective. They were disobedient, they were gainsaying, and they would not do the will of Yahweh Eloheinu. And therefore, Yahweh Eloheinu was totally fed up with them. This reminds me of black people over the last 40 years. Now we see the whole economy crashing. We see the whole situation with Obama, the first African-American president. They are actually making this whole thing implode on his watch, and black folks are not really able to say really nothing. They don't want to say a peep because it's the first black president, and it's not his fault, but they're making it his fault. But this is also a key time for us not to get too caught up in that. See, the, the, the knowledge of ourselves helps us. It grounds us that we can observe the different news and events that's going on. We can get into them. We can study them and find out who's who and what's what about them. But we don't lose track of who we are, you know what I'm saying, based on our admittance as well as our practice. And, and remembering the Senbet, remembering the Sabbath, and keeping it set apart is the first level of, of rebirth, being born again, and uh, studying and growing into the knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim, or the Egeziyavihir, the Son of God, the Son of the True God. But here my earthly father said in his work, he said, separate a man from his identity, and you separate him from himself. Separate a man from his identity, and you separate him from himself. And this is from this work right here, groundbreaking work from back in the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s. And this is also part of our family as well, when we say our family, because it, it approaches the knowledge of ourself from the, the, the Arabic or the, as one could say, the Islamic um, resources. Yet we see in our earthly father's work, he always recognized who the Hamites are or the Kamites, you know what I'm saying, and that the true people both of the Bible as well as of ancient Egypt come out of Ethiopia or Kush, you know what I'm saying, and here we can see um, this kind of continuation you know what I'm saying, of the divine tutelage or the divine heritage, even within our own I, Rasi, Adinos, Teferis, and in our, in our own personal life. So we have to, you know, give thanks and praise and ask that the Almighty, the Almighty God, Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMoshia, has mercy on my earthly father's soul. Yet he was a part of that same 40-year generation of black folks. You understand, we cannot escape that. You understand we must judge, but not our own personal judgment, but according to the righteousness or the ma'at. You understand we have to judge according to the righteousness. So this area of, of Torah, the Torah portion for this particular week, which is the 45th weekly Torah portion of the Parsha, the Minbab Bamarinya, the Nibab, in our annual Hebrew cycle of our Torah scroll readings or the Torah readings and feedings, is the second. This is the second in the book of, of Deuteronomy, of the Orit Zedagim, or Devarim, the Ibrahist of Ankwa in the Hebrew. Now, it constitutes, as we already mentioned, but to go over this again, repetition in some sense, the redundancy in some sense is very important. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to Deuteronomy chapter 7, 11. Now, the Hebrews, we as the Ihud or the black Jews or the, 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 the Hebrews, the Beta Israel, the Hebrew Israelites, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the elect Aras, the Thari, we wanted to put this out as well. We've been talking on it, those who've been paying attention probably have no we've 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 mentioned it maybe in passing. But there's an incredible strength to our diversity as Hebrews. As Hebrews. Whether we are black Hebrew Israelites and some of them are disorientated concerning Haile Selassie the first and concerning um um our identity as Ethiopian Hebrews because of the careless Ethiopians. But remember that technically speaking Ishmael and Esau are also Hebrews too. But how much trouble have we had, and we still do have, look at the Horn of Africa, with some of our family members, 
you know, saying our extended family members. Just because they are difficult extended family members does not mean they're not family members and doesn't mean that we probably won't have certain difficulties with them. You understand? However, it's to acknowledge that there's an incredible diversity of us as Beta Israel because there are 12 tribes of Israel and these are likened to 12 nations. You understand? Know 12 different nations here where it goes into nationality about, you know, um, which tribe are you from national, according to one's nationality. I know there's a very interesting point and ones would like to at least hear what I and I reasoning is on that as well. But what's important about this particular sabbatical reading concerning us as the black Hebrews in the diaspora, the Ethiopian Hebrews, is one is generally read in late July or August. And it's always read on the special Sabbath or the Senbet called Shabbat Nahamu, Shabbat Nahamu, which is the, the, the Senbet or the Sabbath that immediately that's immediately after the Tisha B'Av. We haven't had much opportunity over these um, these days um, with publishing and and editing so forth and so on and creating creating the the, the true berries, what's called so called the libraries of the books and the resources that our brothers and sisters and many of y'all have requested, and we know that many of y'all y'all need and doing our part, you understand, to fulfill that. However, in, 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 in these uh, particular weeks and times, so much has been going on, but at the same time, the Tisha B'Av is a memorial for the, the, the first and the second, 586, some say 589, the destruction of the first temple, the temple of Shlomo, of Solomon, of Nagusa, Solomon, um, Solomon's temple, as well as the destruction of the second temple that was built um, on the pattern somewhat of Solomon's temple was built by um, um, the Herodian family or Herod, you understand? And Herod was an Indumean, an Edomite. Herod is like, was like, you, we could say like the so-called European or the white Jews vis-a-vis uh, -vis us today, but also correspond with other people. So we don't want to just go around labeling like that, you understand? Because some of them, you understand, are really, truly, um, submissive to the will of Yod Hey Vav Hey Yahweh Ad Adonai Malek Ha Olam, you understand? And many of them are also fellowshipping, you know, with I and I within even this online ministry, so forth and so on. So we want to recognize that, you understand? Because about truth, Revelation even says that because He has loved us, many of them will come over to us. You know, and acknowledge exactly that Yahweh has loved us and that we are the true ethnic black Hebrew people. You understand? So we should not dismiss that because we haven't been born again. You understand? And haven't gotten over that old time racism or the so called hate that hate produced. And a lot of our Hebrew Israelite um, people are still at that particular deraja, that particular level. And we hope that they will grow into the fullness, you understand, the fullness of, of the truth. You understand? Which the ground and the rock and the foundation of it is holy, Kedesititu Ethiopia, holy Ethiopia. You understand? Or the Hebraic, let's say Hebraic, Hebrew Ethiopia. But let's acknowledge that not all of Ethiopia or the Horn of Africa is Hebraic in the Kal Kidan sense. You understand? Because remember, Abraham's seed and Abraham's family encompasses the Edomites, the Esau's children, encompasses Ishmael, the so-called Arabs, as well as the Beta Israel, which is the Falasha, the Ethiopian Jews, as well as the, the, the Zimbabwean or the Lemba people, as well as some of the Yorubas and the Ebos and other Africans on the continent, as well as those of us in the Diaz in the Americas, North America, the, the, the belly of the, the, the great fish, you understand? And in in, in, this is the Jonah prophecy, as well as the Caribbean as well, and also um, Central and South America. Many of our Hispanic and, and Ladino or Latin uh, Spanish-speaking people are also part of our family. But instead of us trying to do a census on who's who, you understand, we should be growing and perfecting ourselves in the, the knowledge 
of the Bain Ha Elohim, the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of Yeshua, Yehoshua, Ha Moshi, and not be like those other Jews, you understand, who did the right thing in keeping Torah and, 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 and Shabbat and certain things that they keep religiously, convertedly, religiously speaking, but have denied Yehoshua or Yeshua because they know there's clear evidence that he was not one of them, Polish or German, but he was one of us, uh, Ethiopic, African, and black. You understand? So, um, anyway, that's just a kind of a basic kind of a little introduction to this uh, Shabbatical and, and, and Sabbath study. Coming up, we're going to go into a little bit more detail of the particulars of this 45th um, Sabbatical reading and feeding known in the Hebrew as Va'et Hanan or Wa'et Hanan and in the Royal Amharic Bible of Hala Selassie as Lemenhu. Lemenhu. There's a very important connection with this 40 year period of time, and we're at this cusp of this 40 year period of time. In fact, for the Met of Caduce, as we've been mentioning, and check out the new book that we have that's available now at um, lojsociety.org. Uh, click on the books link and look for Rastafari Notes, Rastafari Notes, and the HIM Hala Selassie, the first Amharic Bible. So more to come, y'all willing. Stay tuned.